Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Jessica and I make videos about the Walt Disney Company and anything else exciting that may be going on in my life at the time. It's really great to have you here. We have a birthday in the Moscato household this week, specifically today as I'm recording this. It is Rapunzel's birthday. For those of you that don't know, Rapunzel, or Punzi as she's most often called, is Adam and my dog. She is a German Shepherd Shiba Inu mix and she is the love of our lives. So I thought today in honor of her birthday, I would make a story time video talking a little bit about how she came to be part of our family because it is kind of a unique story. It's not like we just went and got her at a breeder or something. And I think it really goes to show that she was destined to be part of our family, so. Yeah, today is gonna be a story time all about how we adopted Rapunzel. Okay, so this story starts all the way back in August of 2014. Adam and I were coming off of our Disney college program and we're moving back to South Florida. And we knew we didn't wanna move back in with my dad. We like wanted to do our own thing, but we also couldn't afford to live on our own. So we got an apartment with our best friend, Doug and his girlfriend at the time, two bedroom apartment and like each couple had a room, right? That was our first apartment together even though we shared it with other people and I don't have all the details 100% correct here but sometime around the fall of 2014 Doug and his girlfriend adopted a dog named Zelda. Adam has the biggest heart for animals out of anyone that I know and always has had such a big heart for animals and so he was more than thrilled that we suddenly were going to have a puppy in the house. A very short while after Zelda joined our home Adam became very motivated that we also needed a dog. I, at that point in my life, was really not an animal person. I wasn't really raised to be an animal person. We did have dogs growing up. I have three dogs that I remember having in the course of my life. We had a beagle named Porkchop when I was really, really little, and we didn't have him for very long. Like, I'm talking very little, like, three years old. Not really sure what happened to that dog, but I wasn't super attached to him. Oh, speaking of the birthday girl, come here say hello it's my birthday then when i was five we got my childhood dog whose name was furby he was a shisu and we got him from a breeder i vaguely remember the car ride home with him when we first got him and yeah he was a black and white shisu we loved him i loved him i would say it was very different like i was a little kid it was a dog i loved furby a ton he was my first real dog but I think the big distinction here is that in my family, dogs were pets, right? Like, not that they weren't taken care of, but like, it was a dog. It wasn't a family member in the way that truly Punzi is our child. Like, we probably take better care of Punzi than we do ourselves half the time. There wasn't that same, like, connection, if you will. But I did love him a lot, and um, he was a big part of my childhood. When I was 13, I was away on a twirling competition, like out of town with my grandma, and we came back to my house, and I said hi to everybody, and then I went looking for Furby to say hi, and I couldn't find him. And my mom pulled me aside and let me know that Furby had had kidney failure while I was out of town and was no longer with us, and, you know, had, had been put down, and I remember losing it I was so upset so devastated and they were like well there was nothing you could do so we didn't want to like ruin your trip we didn't want to ruin your competition you'd work so hard like whatever there, there was nothing that could be done at that point so yeah I didn't know until I got home and it was devastating and really upsetting and then several months after that my mom somehow got a dog named Odie that was a Yorkie that was living in an abusive situation. And so my mom took him in and that also became our family dog, but I definitely never connected with Odie. So really in my entire life, the only pet that I really loved, loved was Furby. Um, and then when my mom passed away, my brother took Odie. So yeah, those were my dogs growing up and they were all small dogs, but I was also taught to be fearful of dogs, especially bigger dogs. My brother had an incident when he was young where he like went to hug a family dog while the dog was eating. This was before I was born. And he obviously scared the dog, like it's 100% his fault, but the dog like freaked out and bit him and it like almost got his eyeball. So my family was always like, be careful with dogs, especially big dogs, like whatever. So I was kind of built to be scared of dogs. All that to say, I loved my childhood dogs, but it just, I never would have called myself a dog person or a pet person. And I don't know that I thought like, oh, when I grow up, I want to have a lot of dogs. Like that was not my personality back then, which if you know me now is 
the complete opposite, but <laughs> we'll get there. So all that to say, when Adam said he really wanted a dog, I was kind of like, mm, okay. So don't get me wrong. By the time I'm dating Adam, I'm slightly warming up to the idea of dogs, right? Like, and I know that being Adam's partner at some point, we're gonna have a dog. Like there, there was no getting around that. And I wasn't opposed to it, but it was also like, we just got our first apartment. It was an apartment. So there wasn't like yard space. Dogs are expensive. We had just gotten off the college program. We were both working part time. Dogs are a lot of work. We could barely take care of ourselves. Like there were a lot of those elements that my brain was just like, I don't know that getting a dog is a great idea. So it was kind of like put on hold. Every once in a while, Adam would be on like, you know, a shelter website and send me a link to a dog and be like, look how cute this one is or whatever. And I'd be like, yeah, really cute. But look, it costs money and now's not a good time, whatever. So it was something that I knew was gonna happen sooner or later, but it just didn't feel like quite the right time. So fast forward a little further to December of 2014, it is time for my first ever Future World North reunion with my college program friends. Our friend Saskia from New Zealand that I worked with in Epcot had a longer program than the rest of us because she was from New Zealand and on the international program. So she was rounding out her program in December, even though myself and the rest of my friends went home in August. And our friend Sydney was a part-time cast member in Future World North. So she was still living there and going to college and stuff as well. And so the rest of us decided we would go and meet up with Saskia and Sydney in Orlando, hang out with Saskia again before she went back to New Zealand and just all get back together again. So I was gonna be gone for like three days. It was an all girls trip. So Adam didn't come with me and it was a blast. It was so much fun. One of my favorite trips. I have so many good memories from it, but the most life-changing defining moment of that trip and one of the most defining moments of my life was on the last day of the trip for me, which was Sunday. We went to the Target at Mala Millennia because Saskia doesn't have Target in New Zealand. So we were enjoying Target. And I get a text from Adam with a picture of a dog. He's like, this dog is free on Craigslist. Look how cute she is. She needs a home. And he looked at the picture and I was like, she is very cute. What do you mean she's free? And he's like, the people don't want her anymore. They've only had her for a day and they don't, they don't want her she's gonna be free. We can go get her today, but they want her gone today. So we have to get her today. Something about it, Adam was just really excited about her and I was hesitant, but I was like, okay, she's free. She needs a home, fine. Like I'll, I'll do this. And he's like, okay, can you, can you come home? Like, cause I was gonna come home in a little bit anyways. And I was like, yeah, we're finishing up at Target. I'll, I'll get in the car and come because we had to get her that, that day. They couldn't hold on to her for another day. So I came home from Orlando and we literally, as soon as I got home, Adam jumped in the car and we started talking about possible girl names for our dog. And we talked about Nala and we talked about Lilo and we talked about probably every other Disney dog name you've ever heard. We even talked about Coda, even though it's more of a boy's name, but I was like, maybe Coda, I love Brother Bear, whatever. So we were just bouncing names around and I knew I wanted it to be a Disney name. So we went to meet this dog in a Publix or Walmart parking lot. I don't remember which one, but it was literally a grocery store parking lot. The people had a choke collar on her, like a metal choke collar. They handed her to us with this choke collar on. They didn't ask us any questions. They didn't, they didn't care. They were just like, here you go. Handed us this dog. They were like, this is her favorite toy. It was literally like a sheet or a towel that had been like tied up into a knot. They're like, here you go, take this dog, bye. And that was it. Adam had learned through talking to them online that they homeschooled their children. They had taken this dog whose name at the time was Bella from someone else. They kept the dog for one day and they said, she's too hyper. She's a distraction to our homeschooled children. We have to get rid of her. First of all, this is a puppy, right? She's very young. And second of all, you had her for one day. Like, of course she's gonna be excited. Of course she's gonna be, you know, overwhelmed and distracting. You didn't think to like put some effort and time into her and like see, no? Okay, that's terrible. But whatever, I'm so glad they didn't because Bella turned out to be our Rapunzel. And I'm just so glad they didn't want her because she's perfect for us, but anyways. So like I said, they handed her to us with a choke collar on and that was it. She was in the car with us and she was our dog. 
I remember suggesting Punzi and the argument was like, well, that's not really like a name. And I was like, but her name is Rapunzel and we just call her Punzi. And it just ended up sticking. And she is a Punzi, like, oh my God, Punzi, I can't imagine her being called anything else. And so her full name, even before our last name had changed, because we always knew Adam was going to change his last name eventually, uh, Punzi's full name is Rapunzel Wendy Moscato. And she's our precious little angel. We don't actually know what her birthday is. When Adam and I got her from these people, they estimated she was about eight or nine months old. And we were like, you know, we have nothing that exciting that goes on in March. So let's make her birthday in March. That's about eight or nine months. And we just picked the date that we got her, but in March, which, so we got her December 18th. So her birthday is now March 18th. We have no idea if that's accurate. And yeah, she's our little eight year old princess and she's perfect in every single way. So we brought her home to our apartment and she has been with us every step of the way ever since. I truly have never connected with an animal in the way I've connected with her. Instantly, she was so cuddly and so cute and had such a personality. She is sassy. She's the most dramatic creature I've ever met in my entire life. She's just fascinating. I love everything about her. She is so protective of her people. She is so protective of me and Adam. Like if she hears a noise, she will come and sit on top of me and then bark at whatever direction it's coming from. Like she is guarding me, like she's 30 pounds. She's not going to do anything to anyone, but she is fiercely, fiercely protective of her people. She's fiercely protective of her extended people, Doug, Holly, Ava, the people that are in her life that she knows, she is very protective of. She's just the best girl. She's so cuddly. She gives the best nose kisses. So stupidly intelligent. Like I just never knew that a dog could be so intuitive and smart. She just continues to amaze us all the time at the weird things that she'll pick up on or learn or the new personality traits that she'll start to adapt. I am so glad that Adam convinced me to get a dog and that he was on Craigslist and found Bella because she is like literally a miracle and she was 100% meant to be our dog. I think she's made us both better people. I think she's really helped us grow in our relationship too in terms of like communicating about her and taking care of her and like taking care of something together. She just has the biggest personality. She is not afraid to ask for what she wants or take what she wants. She is so loving. She just exudes love and wants kisses and cuddles from every person that she meets. I don't really know like the, how different Adam and I might be as a couple or how different either of us would be as individuals if we hadn't met Punzi. So that's the story of how we got Rapunzel, our sweet, perfect baby angel who is eight years old, probably today or sometime around today. In the comments, I'd love to hear more about your pets. Tell me about your dogs, your cats, your fish, your whatever animal it is that you're connected to in your life and how you came to make them part of your family, what their names are, anything fun you want to share about them because Punzi has completely transformed me and now I'm obsessed with animals. So yeah, please tell me all your cute pet stories and I would love to hear them. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like for me and for more magical Disney and life content, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you next Saturday. Bye.